Hi, welcome to a2zknowledge.com. So today what we are going to discuss is all about an introduction about Scala. So in the previous video I have explained what exactly and functional programming which is very needed for you before watching this video. So because Scala is a functional programming language, there is a separate video that explains you what exactly and functional programming and you can able to find the link of Scala playlist in the description of this video so where you can find a lot of uh, Scala videos. So today more on I'm going to give you an introduction about Scala. So two things that I want to tell you first of all. So uh, Scala is the programming language and we call it as a functional programming language. That's the first point and the second point is all about Scala has been written in Java. So this is the two point which we are going to discuss today. So first of all like uh, if you see an introduction to Scala or the history of Scala as I told you it has been written in Java. So you can google it for more history about Scala but here I am going to show you what exactly in Scala a quick introduction. Now Scala people are saying it's a functional programming language and since it's written on Java. So what is the special future of Scala if you really see. Scala comes under both object oriented and functional programming. Uh, so people are saying it's only functional programming so the, some people are getting confused if in that case so Scala doesn't comes under object oriented it's not like that. So it comes under object oriented but it gives more functionality with respect to the functions. You can play with functions that's why we used to say Scala is functional programming. It used in many new technologies and frameworks as been uh, people are using this Scala and Scala is a kind of a demandable programming language in market as of now so that's why people are more interested to enter into it. So if you are familiar with the Java then it will be easy for you to learn Scala so that's what people used to say. So actually with my perspective if you are good in Java theory and if you are good in Python practical then the Scala will be easy. So I am not saying this for you to get a panic it's not like that. Since you see it in a new programming perspective also it will be easy for you. When we learn C++ or Java we didn't learn any other uh, programming language right. So directly we entered into Java means Java C++ means it's C++. We used to learn like that. But why people are saying with respect to Scala it's all about as I told you it's written in Java. That's why as Mike got created that we need to know Java as a deep as much as possible. It's not like that even a core Java a brush up you have on Java which will be very very helpful for you to learn Scala because the official books and the official site of Scala learning if you really see they always used to compare Java for each and every concept. So you will be feeling very uh, something uncomfortable when you learn those materials if you are not learning Java means it will be uncomfortable for you. Okay now come to the topic. So if you take Scala, there is uh, two points which I told you, it comes under both functional programming and object oriented and Scala is statically typed so that like Java when you, when you do some mistake in the compile time itself you will get some error. Similarly when we say statically typed it's something like that and Scala is highly brevity. When we say highly brevity, brevity means in the programming world when the number of lines of code got reduced we call that as a brevity. So in Scala world, in Java when you write some 20-30 lines, in Scala you can complete it with some uh, like 7 and um, 10 lines. You can complete the 20 lines of code what you have written in Java. And that also you need to know how to use brevity. That's where it matters. Even the 20 lines of the same thing I can write it in Scala if I don't know how to use Scala syntax and functions. So you will be writing again like Java again 20 lines I'm, I'm, I'm writing the same 20 lines and it is taking the same time means it's not about the problem with Scala it's problem about how we are utilizing it. Even though you can say like even I can utilize the same thing in Java you can utilize you can try to minimize the line, lines of code but it has some extent which has not there in Scala it's not like that there is, there is something uh, kind of no that much extent compared to Java you can make less very very less number of lines of code you can do in that so that's what we used to say brevity and the next thing what I want to say is generally in market people used to say, say Scala is more faster compared to Java because why I'm comparing Java is all about as I told you Java Scala has been written in Java and Java is something uh, even Python or whatever programming language is in leading in, in, in market. Java is something more leading to any other programming language especially in analytics and analysis side. Java and Python are more into picture. 
But if in that case, when Scala comes into picture, people are saying that Scala is more faster with respect to the performance uh, compared to both Python and Java. How is it possible? Because you said Scala is written in Java. If Scala is faster, then obviously Java should be get faster, right? Then how come you are saying that the Scala is faster than Java? So for this question, we need to know something about how the compilation happens in Java. That first you need to see. See, generally, if you see in the normal uh, compilation unit of any programming language that starts from the source code, the source goes to a compiler and the compiler changes it to the machine code. So source is what the high level programming which we are writing, it's a human understandable one. And compiler is something comes with the programming language which you are using. The compiler is the one will convert the source code into machine code so that your machine can able to understand. So this has been slightly modified in the Java world. So source that goes to a compiler which we call it as Java C. Java C is the compiler for Java. And the output of compiler we call it as something an intermediate code. I see I'm just putting as I see an intermediate code technically speaking which we call it as a byte code. And this byte code will be converted as a machine code by a special virtual machine that is JVM, Java Virtual Machine. So this is something a virtual machine. So this JVM comes along with your JDK installation. When you do JDK install, you will get this JVM. If you see the difference why they have made this like, for example, I can say this happens in C and C++. I can say an example, this happens in our Java. So what is the difference? Why they have done this difference? First of all, if you see, in the Java world, the people want to make their programming language as a platform independent so that the request comes from the client through Java can be run in a different machine and a different environment in a different operating system. And the request which goes to a server, which is again a Java program, which receives the request and process that server or maybe in a different environment or it can be in the same environment. So that I don't want to worry about an environment because my programming language can able to run on any machines. So Java is platform independent. When I say platform, operating system, plus the processor which you are using is a platform, simply to say. So here they, what they have done is, they have introduced something as a Java virtual machine. And the Java virtual machine used to get the uh, output of the compiler, which I told you an intermediate code from, it can be come from any machine, from any environment, JVM doesn't care about it. If it is a bytecode, JVM will accept. So, up to this point, we call, a, we call it as a compile time. This part, we call it as a runtime. That's why people used to say there is two types of uh, execution, compile time execution and runtime execution. So I'm compiling this code in some Windows machine and I got the bytecode. And this bytecode I can able to run in a different environment like Linux or Mac, even Windows. So there is a platform independent here. So that's a great advantage of Java. That's why the performance is also get increased a lot. So now, if you take Scala, as I told you, which written in Java, even for installing Scala, you need Java. So first, Java is the prerequisite for Scala. So you have to install Java, then you have to install Scala, then only you can able to do all the Scala programming languages, the exercises. So if you see, Scala also use the same thing, but instead of Java C, the compiler name is a Scala C. But anyway, it is also going to generate an intermediate code, which we call again the byte code. And again, it is going to be as an input for the JVM and the JVM will convert it to a machine code. And if you really see the flow doesn't change, still Java also the same flow and Scala also the same flow. Again, you will get the question, then how come you are saying Scala is fast since it's also used the same uh, kind of uh, compilation process of what Java is using. So there is a two type of answer I can give you for this question. So the first thing is, Scala is something written in Java. Imagine, Scala is something a Java program. Imagine, okay, Scala is a, it's, it's, it's a combination of Java. So, just try to give an answer for this question. See, I'm, I'm having currently Java 1.5. Now, a new version of Java comes with 1.6, which will be faster. Obviously, 1.6 will be faster. So, Scala is something, a new version of Java. We can say like that. Okay, we can think in that way. So, whatever they have in enhanced in Scala is all about a new version of JDK or new version of Java. We can say like that. So obviously there will be a performance boosting will be there. So this is something we can accept for 25 percentage, not more than that. 
So there is a more reason I can give you why Scala is faster. It's all about the brevity. As I told you, brevity is all about trying to write less number of codes and that functionality is highly provided by your Scala. If you see here, you can say, you can, you can tell, you can ask me, see, even though if I write less number of codes, anyhow, it is going to generate a bytecode. Bytecode is common for anything. Even Java bytecode is 100% equal to whatever the by other bytecodes. Even a Scala bytecode or some other language gives me bytecode, it's going to be same. Bytecode is a, is a common uh, format of some data. So if in that case, even though if I write less number of code or a huge amount of lines of code, what is what what is that matters? So it's all about byte code, finally. No, it, it is matters. See, when you write less number of code, the less number of byte codes will be get generated. So what JVM will do is, JVM will take a recursive steps to read the byte code. That's what it will do. It will receive the byte code, it will take some recursive steps to read all those byte codes and take some kind of validations. It will do some kind of process and validations with the byte code. So if, if my actual code is less number of lines, then the bytecode also obviously less number of lines. Still with the same JVM, I am using less number of bytecode compared to Java so that the performance will be high. If I use this 20 lines of Java codes, then 20 lines means I'm just saying a 20 line of bytecode is got created. So it will take a recursive 20 steps to read all those bytecode. Now the same logic has been achieved by some five lines in Scala, imagine. So imagine an equivalent five lines of bytecode is get generated and the JVM will take five recursive steps to read it. So if actual line is 20 and the bytecode won't be 20, for an example, I'm saying this. So obviously, obviously there will be a performance uh, in increment will be there. And one more thing, as I told you, you need to know how to use the brevity in Scala. That's, that's something which is very, very important that you need to know. I have heard from people saying that even though I write whatever I have written in Java and converted to Scala, still I'm getting the same performance. If you really see into the code, it will be like uh, whatever in Java they had some 40 lines, here it was something like 38, 39 lines. Similarly, if you see it's both are equal almost. So they know how to write code in Scala, but they don't know how to use the brevity. Means you need to know more number of syntaxes and functions and shortcuts. That's what I'm coming to say. So here, this is something, a, a kind of a question that people used to ask me and even some uh, in my previous experience, I got this question from many people since it's a new language that people used to ask all sort of these kind of questions. So when we go for any programming language, so we need to know how this programming language is something uh, boosting its performance compared to any other. So in my perspective, this is what actually we need to know before entering into the Scala. So that's what we need to know. Since it's a com kind of a comparison that we are doing, we need to know this. So that's all with respect to this topic. So thanks for watching a2zknowledge.com. Subscribe my channel if you like this video and forward this to your friends and colleagues. And uh, please do see the playlist of Scala so that you can see all the videos. We provide videos in two languages, uh, uh, English and Tamil. And one more thing I want to say, and whatever I explained you, this Java JVM compilation, whatever it is, if you are new to Java, please, I have given a video link for the same description. You can see I have given a playlist, Java playlist link. If you click it, you can see more Java videos also. In that, you can able to find a separate video I have given how the Java compilation happens with the deep, deep explanations. You can see in that. So thanks for watching A2Z Knowledge.com.